Warzone Season 5 has just gone live and I'm going to run you through all the new guns, gulag, gameplay additions, new locations on the map, operators, game modes, the new community event and all the various gameplay and weapon changes that have been made. So let's jump into the new event for Warzone Season 5, Heroes vs Villains. Heroes vs Villains is a community event where you would choose a side and lead them to victory by scoring faction points, by collecting either villain or hero tokens or by contributing to them at the buy stations in all game modes modes. Contributing to a faction will also discount one item across all buy stations just to give you that little bit extra incentive and the winning team's unique weapon blueprint will be given to everyone following the event. Players also have a chance to earn exclusive rewards like a legendary animated 1v1 calling card, the hero or villain's weapon charm, the conflicted spike melee weapon blueprint and the time duality watch and more. Now let's cover off all the new and altered game modes. First up is Operation Last Call. In this limited time mode inspired by Search and Destroy, you choose to defend Caldera by defusing bombs around the island or sabotage it by detonating the explosives at your designated bomb sites. Witness two different outcomes depending on your performance and your intent to cause chaos. And now looking at Fortune's Keep, they have changed the player count in various game modes. So Solos is up to 50 players from 45, resulting in 5 more teams. Duos is up to 50 players from 46 resulting in two more teams. Trio 51 players from 45 resulting in two more teams as well and then quads up to 52 players from 40 resulting in three more teams. Let's move on to the new map updates to Caldera. The Volcanic Peak which is basically a part of Peak that has erupted as a volcano creating various changes across Peak. Task for Tyrants HQ which is expanded point of interest on Peak. The new Gulag which is named Boiler Room which is inspired by a new favourite and the lighting they've cleared the storm across Caldera making sunlight peek through the volcanic smoke and Rebirth Island has also got a sunset going on and later in the season we'll get a nighttime Rebirth Island as well and now let's move on to the major gameplay updates that have been made looking at the Doomsday Station which is a unique station that can be activated for 10,000 causing enemy AI to invade the position via a helicopter drop rewards are lootable by any player regardless of who activated the station and one station will appear per map with multiple possible spawn locations. A unique cosmetic watch skin will be rewarded to the players who activate and fully secure the station. Now looking at the supply box UAVs, this is a new kill streak that can be activated to mark nearby unopened supply boxes on the tack map for 20 seconds. This kill streak can be looted via supply boxes or purchased via a buy station for 3,000. Activating three or more supply box UAVs in a short amount of time will activate an advanced supply box UAV, resulting in a much stronger effect. Supply box types are represented by color, so for example, blue for standard and orange for legendary so on and so forth. Personal supply boxes can also be found across the maps. This is a unique supply box that will spawn a player's favourite loadout weapons and reward the player with 2000 XP. Players can set a favourite via the weapons in edit loadout menus. And lastly on the gameplay changes you can now find a field upgrade called Rage Serum. Players can use this field upgrade to boost their close quarters capabilities for 40 seconds. Positive effects include increased movement speed, melee and unarmed damage, lunge distance and melee stun power. Negative effects include players have a louder presence so your footsteps are probably going to be louder, visible rage effects on the operator and stun and flash vulnerability is increased by 40% but this effect can be countered by the battle hardened perk. So expect to see a lot more people running around with riot shields and using this rage serum. And there have been a number of quality of life changes to Warzone including sorting out the precision airstrike notification. About time they've sorted this out because I've died countless times to this. C4 ground loot will now sit horizontally. There is a quick inventory menu that will allow you to manually equip and unequip the gas mask. Buy stations have been adjusted to add the previous items mentioned. There is also now a setting that will allow you to use the loadout last used to be remembered and come pre-selected when you go to get your loadout. And planes will no longer respawn once destroyed unless it is in game modes such as plunder. Perks have also been updated. So with serpentine, fire and explosive damage is no longer decreased whilst running. And then later Later on in the season, players will have to use tax sprint to make Serpentine be effective. Battle Hardened has also been buffed, 
So stun and flash resistance is now up to 80% from 50 and 70%. And now looking at some of the initial gun changes, Vanguard marksman rifles will now have assault rifle ammo, probably making them a lot more viable. And I'd expect another DMR zone coming shortly. Variable scopes, so the three to six and the four to eight have been adjusted significantly. They now have glint on them and reduced recoil control and adjusted ADS times. So I'd expect to see people changing their assault rifle scope attachments from the three to six to the two and a half time zoom. Now moving on to the new guns. The EX-1 assault rifle is a prototype energy rifle effective at long range and highly customizable which is available at Battle Pass tier 15. And the RA-225 is an SMG that has a high rate of fire, very mobile and compact frame which is available at Battle Pass tier 31. Weapon balances can be seen on screen now with the in green being buffs and the in red being overall nerfs. So the AS-44 has been nerfed overall with its damage and recoil being decreased. The Cooper and the KGM-40 have also been hit by nerfs. The STG has been sort of buffed and nerfed but I would imagine overall it's just majoritively a nerf and the UGM-8 has had its sustained recoil slightly adjusted so nothing massive there. The Bar, the Vargo, the Growl, the Groza, the Vargo 52 and the Type 11 have all been buffed. You can see the various changes on screen now. Hit that pause button if you do want to see it in more detail. And then moving on to the SMGs and shotguns, the Armaguera, the Marco 5, the H4 Blixen have all been nerfed along with the combat shotgun and then the UGR, the PPSH-41, the Fennec, the P90, the M19, to a and a striker have all been buffed again pause on screen now to see those various changes and moving on to the snipers and tactical weapons the free lines has been nerfed however the tundra the type 99 and all the snipers all the marksman rifles the svt the g43 the m1 garand the m1916 and the crossbow have all been buffed so again just hit that pause button if you want to see anything in a bit more detail but i'm not going to bore you by listing through all the changes now over this video and moving on to the various new operators have been added or being added to the game. Raul Menendez has been added. Yes, he was first in Black Ops 2, so as a returning character. Gabriel Rourke, who will be coming later on in season, is another returning character, but from Ghosts. He, Seraph Zenzen, is another in-season addition. Seraph is from Black Ops 3. And Khalid Al-Assad is another addition in season, a Middle Eastern warlord and a key antagonist throughout all the Call of Duty Modern Warfare series. And lastly, looking at the download sizes, PlayStation 5, you're gonna be having a 10 gig update along with PlayStation 4 at 10 gig as well. An Xbox Series One X and S and Xbox One both have a 9.9 .9 gig update. And then PC, as per usual, if you've just got Warzone installed, it's a 12.6 gigabyte update and then a 13.4 gigabyte update size from Warzone and Modern Warfare. Yes, it's been a little while since I've posted. I've just been taking some time out. My son has sort of been in and out of hospital. All is fine, but I'm going to be back to posting regularly now going forwards. So hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy the video and if you want to see more of this kind of content. Cheers for watching then, guys. Bye.